West Ham coming off the back of a spirited but not quite enough uh, performance against Bayern Leverkusen midweek. Uh, they take the trip to Crystal Palace to Selhurst Park, only to the side uh, that beat Liverpool at Anfield last weekend. Welcome back to West Ham Unofficial. I hope you are aware you join us for the match preview of Crystal Palace versus West Ham. It's West Ham's return to uh, the Premier League after European disappointment midweek. And that is uh, the case for most uh, English sides in European football football, of course, bar Aston Villa. But yeah, a huge, huge game. Five games to go in the Premier League and this is one we want to be targeting to win. All the way over in the US of A, Larry is joining me. Larry, how are you? Good, JK. How are you doing? Not bad. Not bad. And for once, the weather over in America is reflected in England today. It's been quite nice today and it looks very nice there too. Very good. It's sunny out today. I actually got some shorts on. I know Richard oh. probably likes that. And uh, <laughs> About 15, 16 Celsius for us here. So uh, uh, it's nice. Very good. Yeah, I think we I think we've reached the uh, nosebleed high of about 13 degrees today. So uh, <laughs> there you yeah. go. Touchdown. All good. All good. Uh, Pete's joining us. Thank you very much indeed. Good evening to everybody else in the chat. Um, yeah, let's, we'll talk a little bit about Thursday night. Obviously disappointing, but I think we can take some confidence might be the wrong word but some some spirit that we had in that game and try and take it into this game larry because i thought we played well i i think we played great with the heart that we had out there and i think throughout this season we've had maybe two to three maybe four matches where we saw brilliance or effort but what i saw from the boys and the effort they put out on there it was outstanding as we saw at the end you know just they just kind of ran out of gas, which is understandable. We can't play that uh, front foot high pace without having uh, some uh, some people off the bench to do that. I was very proud of them, though. Like I said on the reaction, I'm not going to say a bad word about it anyway. That's from Moyes to everybody because I thought they gave it their all against a team that's like running Europe right now. Already yeah. won their they already won their tournament. Uh, I think they underestimated our uh, spark in the first half. Uh, they brought in, you know, some offense. You know, Boniface, who's a, a one of their get lead scorers, and uh, he couldn't get it done. So, you know, it's something that hopefully we can get momentum on to finish out the Premier League. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Momentum is probably the right word to use. And look, we had them wrestled in that first half. There's no doubt um, about that. They'd say they, they, you know, they made a tactical change inside half hour for goodness sake. Yeah. Uh, and they and they really were struggling to cope with Antonio up front, which we stressed all week after seeing um, how they didn't really deal with Antonio on the couple of occasions that he had it. And look, returning back now, uh, Crystal Palace, that I've just looked down the last five games we've got left. Palace, Liverpool, Chelsea, Luton, Man City. We've still got to play Liverpool, Chelsea and Man City. Uh, and look, we're still trying to chase that European spot, whether for the greater good of the club, whether it's good to have a year off Europe or not, we'll park that debate and just say we want to finish as high as possible, which is true. Um, this game and the Luton game, on paper, look like the, the two non-negotiable wins if we want to be uh, chasing for Europe, Larry. A hundred percent. You you took it right out, the words right out of my mouth because I was saying this is a must-have. You know, throughout this season we started off so well, and then we the, in 2024 we all what we've talked about we've been hoping for other teams to do something. We were even talking about this week we wanted Man City to win so they could maybe the eighth team could get into Europe. That's mm. not going to happen for us. With five matches remaining and there's teams in front of us and behind us with games in hand, it's a must win. I mean, a must win if we want to try to get to that seventh spot. We And we need to, like I said, we need to do the Crystal Palace, who's I think 15th right now, Luton, who got really spent today. Um, mm. And then we need a couple upsets that we didn't have before. Can we do that? I don't know. I'll be cheering for them all the way. But if we have any hopes of getting in the seventh spot, uh, it's a must win in my in my opinion. Yeah, for sure. Look, nine points should be the target uh, yeah. for West Ham. Uh, that Chelsea game is absolutely massive. 5th of May. Um, yeah, it's so, so big because Chelsea are going to be in and around there as well. Of course, they're uh, in the FA Cup semi-final as we speak. I'm not sure the score, uh, but it was nil-nil the last time I checked. Uh, so they're fighting on a couple of fronts left uh, still this season. 
Chelsea have got a couple of games in hand are about four points off us or one point or something off us. Yeah. So, um, so that that game, if we win, we get three points when they get nothing, you know. So that's the that that's the big big game. But we've also got to win this game uh, and beat Luton. Those three nine points. Look, if we get anything against Liverpool or Man City, it's an absolute bonus. I don't, I don't think anyone's sure. expecting too much. So we're expecting something from those three games, uh, and they are big big games. Robert's in the chat. I hope you are well, Lee. Uh, well, yeah. Eight or nine points has to be the target. Thursday was outstanding. I shattered myself into a score for a Friday morning. I would have done if I was there. Fair play to absolutely. Uh, we did us proud. That's for sure. Just a little word on Crystal Palace then. We discussed it on the Roundup show most weeks. Um, but the side that have ups and downs could be brilliant one week or awful the next. And very similar um, to who we played last weekend, actually, in Fulham, who, did, who have done the double over us in Frenchy this season. Palace restrained side, Oliver Glasner, now in charge, former Frankfurt manager. So we've come across him before, but you never know what you're going to get with Crystal Palace. No, and, and, and I kind of looked over them. They don't score many goals. They don't have really a lot of goals uh, total for the year. Um, and they've given up a little bit less than what we've given up because we know we can't even buy a clean sheet anymore. But uh, so, I mean, it's a, it's a 15th place team. I, th- I think they got 33 points altogether. And we've said this, it's a game that we got to have. This team is beatable. Now, again, they did beat Liverpool last week, one nothing. But I think we all can agree that Liverpool is on some kind of um, downward spiral right now. I don't know yeah. what to figure out. You could, you know, they're lost for words. They're just not able to score. Nunes is not. But anyway, uh, so they can they can show up. But uh, again, it's going to really, dep- you know, a team like that. It's how we how we show up. And if we can show up like we did on Thursday, um, we should take care of our business. Yeah, I hope so. I mean, just two results in the last month that reflect Crystal Palace as a club perfectly is a home draw to Luton and a win away from home at Liverpool. You simply don't know um, what Palace are going to do. Now, look, they've had some um, really good players over the years and we've had some uh, good games that usually end in a hell of a lot of goals last season at their place. It was a 4-3 loss. There was some drama early on in the season at uh, our place between these two sides. This game always guarantees goals, which now I've said that it will be a nil-nil draw. Um, <laughs> listen, our our squad depth or lack of it is going to play a part in this. There's no doubt. Some of the players look completely out of their feet with half an hour left uh, on Thursday, which isn't their fault. And I'm expecting similar things uh, on Sunday. It's a quick turnaround again. It's our final Thursday Sunday assignment uh, of the season. Uh, and we just need to try and get it done because there is going to be some tired legs out there, no doubt, Larry. I, I totally agree. And I think this is one time in the game plan or whatever, we really need to rely on, regardless of what we think of our bench, you know, we need to maybe look at Johnson, bring him in and stuff because he's got pace and he doesn't have to be a, a back. He can come up the midfield or whatever. We see, he could go up to He's got some energy there because we're going to need that. If we're going to win the game, uh, we're going to have to have the bench come up and perform or lose. But we can't, you know, I would like to stay, you know, high press the way we were doing through the entire game if we can. Now, like I said, you saw on Thursday we did and we relaxed. Relax is a bad term. We sat back a little bit in the second half. I think that was just to make sure we can maintain our legs for the whole match because you can't mm-hmm. run at that you know, front foot the whole time. We just, you know, you usually have a dynamic uh, person to bring in. So I think if we could – uh, come in, maybe thinking about even Ings, having Ings using yeah. him some. Paqueta, you know, I don't know what it is about him. Um, I've heard other comments, and I'm in total agreement. Is, is he disinterested um, in the last couple matches? I haven't seen any uh, – I haven't seen any – heart's not the word. I haven't seen any real hustle in him. Mm. All I see is him falling on the ground a lot and, you know, and doing his normal thing. And I'm not trying to bash on Paqueta. I'm just trying to be real. You know, and there's criticism because he didn't show up for the match uh, and he watched it at home with his family and all that stuff. But I'd like to see something from him because I tell you, when Bowen came back and he was there on Thursday, did you just – and Antonio, I'm telling you what, Antonio has impressed me so much mm. in the last month or two when he's come back with the hustle that he's had, the effort he's had, he's given us all. You know, we were fighting the referee to it. And I don't want to – like I said, I don't want to say negative stuff. But that referee, there were so many times that, that – I saw one time when a defender for Luton because had his elbow up in Antonio's face. So not to change the subject or that, but we need we need to come in there with a full start hard like that, and then to continue that, the people that get tired, we have to rely on our bench, and it's either winner, you know, sink or swim, but we have to go for it. 
For sure, absolutely. And Joe, you mentioned Bowen there who came back in, probably nowhere near full fitness, but they just got him back in there. And I thought he made a huge, huge impact. He looked, you know, he looked sharp uh, with what he had. He probably only 70 or 80 percent fit, but gave it his all. And look, the question's got to be raised here. If Piquet is in the squad, do you start him? I don't know whether I would. I don't know whether I I would. I mean, you know, he was awful against Leverkusen in the first day. He was awful against Fulham, I thought. And Joe, he's he, yeah. he's he's become very soft on the ball. He's become easy to pick the ball off of. Um, and at the end of the day, do we want that in this game? Uh, I don't know. Uh, will Moyes have the balls to not start him? I'm not sure. I think he I think he will start him. But uh, look, Paquette is a player that can prove us all wrong and be brilliant tomorrow. Uh, but. You know, I think everybody's seen it. There's just been a lack of uh, interest there. Probably there's been a lack of um, fight to go back and win the ball. Actually, he's just looked a little bit lazy in recent weeks, which I'll tell you right now is something that Pep will not tolerate whatsoever at Manchester City. So maybe they might they might hold off uh, on that. But that's something to deal with in the summer. But that's a great look, point, Jake. It's yeah. a great point that you know if he's showing up like that or he's having. And I don't want to go down that path of attitude or whatever else, or he's thinking something disinterested because it's not up to his level stuff. Pepper, never going to look at that stuff. If you're not going to be a ball player, it's kind of like uh, those saying I always say in any sport, sporting event, the true heart of a person or a player that's out there is if you're getting your butt whooped by somebody and you're still out there giving it your all, that's the one I will go in the fight with any time. But if one has already put a defeat there before it was, and I'm not saying Paquette is doing that, but you, you articulated it very well, what I was thinking about, all the things that Paquette has been doing in the last couple of weeks that just doesn't cut the mustard. No, it's been frustrating. That is for sure. Robert says, hopefully we can beat Palace if we can run uh, Leverkusen as we, uh, yeah, run totally Leverkusen agree. as close as we did. We, and, you know, exactly. And they're a fantastic uh, outfit and we did it in exceptionally well for 45 minutes. And if we can bring the same work ethic uh, and the word probably probably just tactics to the game because there was a, there was a distinct difference between our normal Premier League um you know setup to what we saw where to go in the first half on Thursday night it seemed like the shackles had been removed from the side so then it begs the question why can't we go and do that in the Premier League why can't we just be a little bit more attacking against a side that yes all right beat Liverpool last weekend but they had a little bit of a, uh, a rocky moment they were always going to at some point um but there are sides that are 15th for a reason because they go up and down and they have dodgy results uh, on a regular basis. Have a go would be my input tomorrow, Larry. Oh, 100%. We got to go all at it and stuff like that. And if they got the attitudes, because we had players on there Thursday that were playing hard for the team and the fans were brilliant. I made a joke that I said, I because I was watching the, the match uh, on my patio because it was, you know, three o'clock game, sunny out. It was, it was like 18 Celsius that day. It was really nice. And I said, I could hear the fans from my patio. <laughs> because I was, it was because it was great because I had my TV going and I could hear the fans never giving up on that team and the team didn't give up on us and it was just that was one of the matches that I remember for quite some time now that whereas you know we didn't give up we didn't throw in the towel and we played with so much heart so um, yeah I'm just proud of the boys we need to show up like that we need some tactics where I really believe that you know the guys are going to run out of energy if we continue that so we're going to have to rely on some people on the bench and I guess our question is who is it. You know, what I mean, who are the team? I mentioned Johnson and Ings is a couple of them there. Uh, you know, I don't think Moyes is going to put any youngsters in there or something like that. I don't think we'll see Mubama. I don't even know if he's on the lineup lately. But so, I mean, the guy, the people that I can point to are people like that. And again, it begs to argue our January window went down and, you know, the missing of Fornells and uh, Ben Rama probably really hurting us a little bit now. But that's, that's water under the bridge. Uh, but I think, honestly, we got it. Our bench has to step up with what we have to win the game if we're going to stay at that tempo. Yeah, for sure. Um, now, look, my expectation tomorrow is that we're tired and there's a few, you know, yeah. ragged legs in there, and we're not quite at the not quite at the ability that we see in the first half, which is which is okay. Which you know, you know, that's what I'm expecting. It's a, it's a direct representation of poor business in the January transfer window. It's a direct 100%. link uh, to how we've put ourselves into an unprepared position uh, going into this second half of the season and we all know that and you know we shouldn't be taking that out on the players you know I'll be yeah. in that away end tomorrow and there will be frustration uh, if we're a bit tired we're not quite and we're a bit flat which uh, is a quite a huge possibility and frustration will get taken out on the players which is wrong now look Moyes has got to be smart tomorrow Moyes has got to make some changes because he can't start the same 11 again because they're oh, running out of their perfect, feet perfect. you know I, I'll be 
I'll be shocked if he starts Antonio from Tottenham. Totally he's put his heart and soul into the last three yeah, weeks and played crazy. pretty much every game. Start Ings up front and chuck someone up there with him. For goodness sake, he's quite capable. He's shown it in games against Sheffield United and Burnley. And Crystal Palace aren't too much better when they're not on their A game. Um, I mean, there's yeah. just a few players that are completely and utterly tired and done. And Moyes needs to accept that and make some changes and use that small bench that we've got. You got it. Jake, you hit it perfectly on there because that's what I was question I was going to have for you in the chat is, do we, the people we know who really gave it their all, do we strategically bring some people off the bench to start, like an Ings or the Johnson I said about, even a Cornet or something like that. And But then you have to have the tactics as if it's not working out and you know we need this victory, then we bring them in. But if it's lasting to the halftime where we wouldn't have to bring an Antonio in until the second half, maybe the 60th minute, which you always like to do, that would be the way I would attack it is bring some of these strategic and monitor it if it's not working out. Now, Moyes, I don't know when the last time he's ever subbed any person in the first half unless there's an injury. But I mean, that's the kind of forward thinking I think we need to really attack that and start out there because if it's not working out, hey, then we got to bring them in, right? Then we have to bring in the Antonio real quick. But I mean, if I was Moyes, I would gauge the, the, they, they should know the health and, and the fatigue of the players more than we do. So whoever are the ones that are in there that are fatigued or something like that, uh, we could do that. Now, again, we do have the luxury. If we had the Paqueta, we know we could have bringing him in. He should be fresh. Emerson, who we all still love and all that, he should be fresh. So we got people like that. That's good news. We know we bring them in there. But I would if I was king for a day or whatever, just like what you said is I would sit like an Antonio now give him some rest and then he can come out like a cannon in the second half yeah because again I'll beat on my drum there you know I've been giving Antonio a hard time like for last year sometimes but he has done so much and got so much energy for us and trying so hard you can no one can tell me that he's not out there giving his all on that pitch man and then so you know I'm proud of him but I spot on Jake I think we have to we'll see what happens when the lineup comes out tomorrow but I mean that's what if again if I was the manager I would try to have that strategy and it backfires or they start not lit, meeting expectations then you sub them out instead yeah, of exactly. vice versa yeah. instead of vice versa you know then you're counting yeah. them at the end at the yeah. end you put them in right you broke the bank then you it, you're riding with it at least here you have some maneuverability. But. Exactly. Yeah. And look, uh, I do similar to what we did um, against Wolves and start Mikel Antonio on the bench, having or uh, or Bowen leading the line. And then you've got 45 minutes of uh, probably Mikel Antonio's mindset shifts. Thanks. If he's if he's starting tomorrow, Antonio, he's got another 90 minutes and he'll be ineffective and he'll get subbed off with 20 minutes to go and it will be pointless. 100%. You know, start Ings up front uh, and have somebody playing off him or even stop Bowen through the middle and have Ings just off of him uh, feeding him because that not only does that then uh, help Bowen but it helps Ings' game as well so it's a win-win for all uh, for all parties there uh, maybe play that a little bit now I don't know look Palace have got injuries as well they haven't got um, a huge amount uh, to sort of work with uh, so look I mean Moyes didn't make too much of an indication about injuries and all the rest of it in his pre-match press conference. Probably wanted to keep his cards uh, relatively close to his chest. George Earth is not going to be um, back involved, but Moyes did reiterate uh, that he's doing really well, of course, and Good. following Good. Um, concussion protocols, which is really, uh, really reassuring to hear from that sense. But look... Um, it, as you stated, Paquetta and Emerson come back in. Would I start Paquetta in an ideal world when we've got an adequate amount of replacements? I don't know. Uh, that's yeah. up for debate. But I think he starts because of how little we have. Uh, I don't think we've got a choice, to be totally honest with you. Um, Paquetta and Emerson come back in. They're fresh to start with. Whether Ariola's fit, we'll have to wait uh, and see. Whether, whether Mavropanos is fit, we'll have to wait and see. Um, so you found it right back, the expectation. Then into midfield, Larry, you've got to work this out now. Um, or Moyes has got to work it out. Do you drop Wall Prowse for Such? Uh, do you, sorry, do you drop Wall Prowse for Paqueta? Do you drop Suchek for Paqueta? Yeah. I know, do you know what? I thought Wall Prowse was excellent on Thursday night, but he also did a hell of a lot of work, and maybe that might reflect on Moyes' choice because he looked knackered. No, I agree with you. I, I thought about that, and you know, JWP. I think he's actually shown up in the last couple of matches, some and stuff yeah. like that. Uh, so that, that's going to be a tough thing for him because even like I said with uh, Suchek, my potato salad man, is that you know. He, he made some great defensive plays on Thursday. So he's stepping up back there where, you know, he'd be a defensive liability. I thought he played well. So that's a tough decision, but that's a good choice to have, like you said, though, so we could put that off. But um, 
if I was thinking anything right there, I'd probably uh, sit JWP and just probably because, you know, like I said, even on some of the corners now, you see Bowen's taking a few of them and stuff like yeah. that. But it's a, I guess it's a good problem to have with them. I, and, and again, if I would, sometimes we don't know things that are happening behind the scenes. So I would gauge whoever the managers are, who looks the most fatigued at a mm. suit check in JWP, who looks the most healthy and stuff like that. And then I would actually just lean on the, on that part. And then they have the flexibility to bring them back in. But yeah, that's a good, that's a good question how they're going to do that. Yeah, uh, for sure. Let's take some of your comments. Uh, Wazim says, historically, this game always ends in a draw, uh, but we need to push for that European place. Absolutely, yeah, it was a draw back at London Stadium uh, last time out between these two sides. Andy, thanks for joining us. A couple of 1-1 draws coming. We'll come on to some predictions a little bit later on. Uh, Palace have eight players injured. They do. Uh, I'll come on to Palace team news in just a second. Hamaher, thanks for joining us. Saying hello to you as well, Larry. I hope uh, you are well. Uh, right, Oliver Glasner offered an update on Crystal Palace's team news and he said that Jefferson Lerma uh, will be unavailable. Uh, Rob Holding, the centre-half, former Arsenal centre-half, uh, is back involved and has trained all week so he uh, is going to return. Uh, a, f- a few question marks, maybe, maybe not, to be back involved. Chris Richards, Joel Ward and Will Hughes uh, have got knocks so may or may not um, be coming back but nobody else is coming back in so they still have quite a hefty uh, injury list um, for Crystal Palace. We've got to try and exploit that. They had a really hard Hard game last week, I should imagine, but they also didn't play midweek, so they should be fresher than us. Uh, but I think we've got better players than them, so it sort of balances itself out, Larry. Yeah, I think the quality level, and you look at the stats that we have, we're, we're, we're better in a lot of different stats to them, and with the injuries you just said, and then I guess the other part is the, the variable that's outside, how much do they want to play for? They're basically 15th right now, pretty they're not going to go to make a, a top of the table or anything like that. I think they're somewhat safe out of uh, relegation. So do, do they, are they already at the beach? Yeah, I know it's only five games, but yeah. it's how they show up there. Are they going to come over a little bit motivated because they beat Liverpool last week? Um, I don't know, but uh, I think it's something, again, I think we, our players, we have a superior team, I believe, at least a starting 11. Um, and then um, from there, I think we should be able to, you know, take care of it but we've said that before and we see some of our results so yeah uh wolves goon is still nil nil at molyneux that'll be interesting to pick up the second half of in just a while oh that's right yeah <laughs> larry, how much, my tea. Oh, you can see it. larry how much land is your property on it's like you're sat there in acres can you see the tv oh yeah i can just in the corner very good <laughs> yeah <laughs> very good uh yeah to be fair larry owns most of america it's quite a big place no. but he owns most of it no. Just a small little piece of land. <laughs> uh, what's on the grill today? Anything on the grill? Can see it just pour you behind you there. Well, we just got back. I said from having a little eats at lunchtime as we were out there and stuff. So I have the grills here. I haven't decided yet, but I did uh, pick up some chicken wings. You know, I love chicken wings. I always pick up some chicken wings I can cook up and uh, some stuff like that. If I don't cook anything today, I'll definitely cook it tomorrow. Very good. Uh, very good. Right, we'll move on to some predictions then. I'll go first. Um, I'm going to say a draw, I think. 2-2 uh, Desmond is what I'm going to go for. Uh, I'll be surprised. I'll be surprised if we win this match, to be honest. Fatigue is going to play a huge, huge role uh, in this game. If we win, brilliant. But unfortunately, uh, I think a draw is probably where your money is most safe. 2-2, two, two, both defences, not fantastic. Cut the goals for each side sounds about right to me. Larry, are you going to bring some confidence that I can't find? I am going to. I'm going to sometimes, you know, I always say I can't go to Vegas because my predictions are awful. But anyway, I'm still going to say 3-1 West Ham. I think we're going to build off of that uh, momentum uh, from Thursday. Um, and I hope Moyes uses some of the tactics that you and I kind of discussed. And I hope the managers and the leaders in that locker room look at seeing who's fatigued and use that to position who doesn't start. Again, like you said, is it going to be Sue Checker, JWP to get dropped? Um, do we put in Ings in for Antonio? All strategies that I personally like. Are we going to, or are we going to start with the same people? And if we do, unfortunately, we'll probably go back to the Moyes way, where we're sitting back and counter, sitting back and counter. The stuff that drives us all crazy. Uh, it, what an entertaining first half Thursday was, right? We, we don't see yeah. much of that. So if we start the same uh, eleven, my, I'm sorry, minus of course Emerson Paqueta, but and we, they're fatigued. Uh, like Antonio, I cannot foresee us playing on the front foot high pressing like we were doing. Mm. So I'm going to still confidence three to one hammers. 
There we go, 3 1. I tell you what, uh, I admire the confidence and I very much hope uh, that you are correct. Look, the, look, the standard um, comment when you go to Palace is need to be aware of Elise and Eze. Zaha used to be added to that category, but it's, you know, they've got their danger men. Uh, Elise, uh, Eze, good players on their day can give full backs and centre halves uh, a good grilling, excuse the pun there. Um, and, <laughs> and look, if they're on it, they're on it, and we, you know, we're still going to, have to defend really well. They've got some really uh, dangerous players going forward, but uh, whether Bowen starts or not, whether he's fit enough to start again, uh, I don't know. Uh, a lot of these sort of points that we're making depends on uh, that lineup an hour before he, you know, this could go um, either way. If you're totally honest, depends on how strong the lineup is, and not only how strong the lineup is, how fit the players are uh, going into this game. So there's plenty uh, to depend on. Uh, it's a really hard game to predict, actually. So uh, it will be interesting uh nevertheless i'm be in that away end tomorrow at selhurst park so expect uh, a match day vlog tomorrow evening hopefully a good one hopefully some celebrations uh, and a west ham win to cap off the weekend larry let's have your final thoughts i just want to go uh, the team to go out there with the passion they had on thursday don't beat ourselves many times this year when we give up a goal or two or like that some of it's self-inflicted by bad, not not clearing the ball properly. Mavin Panos went back to his old ways instead of clearing it fully out, clearing it up to the middle and turning the ball over. If we can don't shoot ourselves in the foot against a quality team like this, with a, a team that's not as quality as I believe we are, we should be able to get that victory. Don't beat ourselves. Let's hope so. Let's hope we can get that victory. Uh, I'm going to stick with a draw, hoping for a win. Uh, David's going for 3-1 to Palace. Looking at Chelsea, Man United and Newcastle's fixtures, they have a lot more winnable games than ours. Can't see us getting Europe uh, next season. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm inclined to agree, but if we win three yeah. out of five, which I'm currently not predicting, but if we win the three out of five, um, then we give ourselves a really good chance. We'll have to wait and see. Take me to where Larry is. Beautiful. There we go. Uh, <laughs> there we go. 2-1 to the Hammers, says Andy. Love it. Ronnie's going for Palace 2, West Ham 1. Disappointed in you, Ronnie. Disappointed. 3-2 to the Hammers, says Robert in a thriller. Uh, of a game, uh, I would say, take that. get in there. I'll take I that. take that right now. So, yeah, thank you very much. Drop a like, subscribe to the channel if you're new. Larry, thank you very much indeed for joining me. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. You too, as well. From us, come on, your eyes, and we'll come on, your eyes, right here on West Ham. Official see you tomorrow. Big game tomorrow. Let's hope uh, the lads can go out there and do it once again. We'll see you soon. Bye bye. Cheers, Larry. Thank you.